Um, this morning, um, I tapped the shoulder of a retired gentleman in our church, and I just said, hey, you here all alone? And his response to me was, no, my bride's around here somewhere. Um, I love the fact that he called her his bride when they've been married for years. Um, and just that, like she's around here, she's around here somewhere. You know, sometimes when we talk about God's presence, it's that kind of a way. Like, hey, um, hey, where's God? Well, hey, I know he's, he's just surrounding me somewhere. And we can have that kind of an idea, and that feels really good, and that is a part of the presence of God. But it's not the only part of the presence of God. So there's that, like, hey, is God here? Yes. He's around here, he's around here somewhere. Now, let's take another story at the food trucks. Um, we have a little one-year-old grandchild named Jesse who wanders and wanders around. And um, if I would ask my daughter or son-in-law, like, hey, where's Jesse? And they would say, oh, he's around here somewhere and smile. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, would it? <laughs> um, that there, there's somebody's eyes need to be on him. And when your eyes aren't on him, you, you delegate it to somebody else. Hey, would you keep an eye on him? And I think there's that kind of the presence of God where we say, I'm not letting him out of my eyesight. And what happens that we let God out of our eyesight? Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we get just talking to somebody else. And then, then like we, we lose sight of, of the presence of Christ in our lives. And I, I want both of that. I want there to be a sense of wherever you're at, like, yes, God is around me. I can feel his presence. But then there's this, say, like, I am not letting him out of my eyesight. So that's what we're going to learn tonight. That's where we're going to go tonight of just being in his presence and learning, learning not to let him out of our eyesight. Um, today we're continuing on. This is number six in our Sunrise Top Ten. So um, we've, we've gone through several. Here, here it is, just like you can fall asleep after you see this, but trust and obey for there's no other way. I stole it. Um, anybody ever you heard that hymn? Trust and obey for there's no other way. As I've been digging into this, um, have you heard me say this before? And even today, God is writing a beautiful story in our lives. God is writing a beautiful story in our life. It's any story that's good has a little drama in it. Every story that's good has some adversity in it. Um, that's what keeps our interest. You might be in a little bit of that right now. God is writing a beautiful story in our lives. Here's our job. Today, we will trust him. And today, we will obey him. We will trust him and obey him and then follow him as God writes this, this beautiful story in our life. In the book of Hebrews, there's mentioned three times um, this phrase, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Three times it's mentioned. I love specifically chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, uh, again, God again set a certain day calling it today. Isn't that interesting? God set a certain day. Hey, there's a, this certain day that's coming up. Let's call it today. <laughs> you know, what he means by that is you cannot follow God tomorrow. You can promise that you'll follow God tomorrow. You can't follow him tomorrow. You can't follow him yesterday. Like he can go back and he can, he can come and get you where you're at yesterday, but you can't follow him yesterday. You can't follow him to tomorrow. You can only follow him today. God set aside a certain day and he called it today. This is what he did a long time later when he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. This is so big. Um, I think one of the best moments of worship today was when Anna read her poem, her prayer. Wasn't that powerful just to just to hear that. What was more powerful to me was to see Anna's presence here today. Because if you saw her right here in front of us, did you see a tenderness? Did you see a sweetness? Did you see a hunger for God? 
and I, I and it's so beautiful begin to see is that God like God's taking her somewhere and it's God's writing a beautiful story in her life and what you see in that as she begins to follow him as she begins to listen to his voice as she wrote this prayer down that God is writing a beautiful story in her life and it's making her tender towards him today I want you to go outside um, along this wall on the, in the hallway is recent baptism photos. Um, Anna, there's a picture of you up there. And it's so beautiful uh, of watching Anna get baptized by Caleb uh, right up here on stage. But I want to say that Anna looks different today than she did then. That there's the presence of God that's all over her life. There's a sweetness and to tenderness. And do you know what that tells me? That she has been trusting God and she has been obeying God and God's doing something in her life. You know, if you look back on your baptism as the day that you were closest to God, you haven't followed and you haven't lived out this principle. We trust Him today, we obey Him today, and we let Him work this out in our lives. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing uh, that happens. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus was teaching, uh, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, and he, it's a powerful passage from chapter 5 to chapter 7. At the very end um, of this sermon, he tells a story about two, two different people. Um, it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Anybody want to be that person right there? Um, unfortunately, there's a but. <laughs> there's a contrast that goes in. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice... It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. There's a contrast between two different lives and two different houses that are being built. The house that's being built is our life. Everyone's building a house. It doesn't talk about how big the house is, how little, how or ornate it was. It uh, doesn't describe every one of us is building a house. That's one thing that's in common. Second thing that's in common is everyone encounters a storm as they build their house. Some of you are going through that storm right this minute. Um, others of you have been through the storm and you've seen where God was proven faithful. And when you sang that song, all my life you have been faithful, you were probably remembering a storm that God took you through. So in both cases, it's not like one and had the easy life and that's why their house stood and one had a hard life and their house crashed. Um, both of them went through this exact same storms. Everyone builds a house. Everyone goes through storms. In both cases, both of them heard the word of God. I want to say to this to every one of us, every one of us hears God's voice. God gives direction to us. He helps us know this is the way, walk in it. But the description is today if you hear his voice, don't have a hard heart. Don't, don't get a distracted heart. Um, instead, the wise man built his house on the rock by hearing and obeying. That's what we got to do. We've got to trust him today. And we've got to obey him today. And we trust and obey that God, God walks us through this life. Trust and obey. There's no other way to live this life but to trust him completely today and obey him completely today. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about life being a race. Um, and this is after, you know, three times he's told them when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. When you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Then he shares this in chapter 12. 
Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, who are these, who are these people who are the great cloud of witnesses that are surrounding us? They are people who trusted God in a difficult time and obeyed God in a difficult time. And right now, they are surrounding us, cheering us on, because uh, these people don't get today here on earth. They don't get to live our life. They don't get to trust Him with the storms that you and I are going through today. They are now just the great cloud of witnesses that are pouring courage into us. On this certain day, when we hear His voice, let's not harden our hearts. Let's follow Him. It says, let's throw off everything that hinders. This word that hinders is like a burden. Um, have you ever wore like a weight vest around you? It's like running your life with this weighted vest that's on. Or, or if you were in the military and you carried a pack that was on you, like, he, like throw off the pack. Throw off the burden. Throw the things that are holding you down. It's time to release them. And cast your cares upon him, for he cares for us. So we throw down our, our, our burdens, and the sin that so easily entangles, and the picture here is just having all kinds of junk around our feet, so that when we're running, we're getting tripped up all the time, and it's described as sin. You and I were not meant to be entangled in sin and burdened down in running this race. Instead, what are we to do? Fix our eyes on Jesus. Never let him out of our sight. We trust him today. We obey him today. And when we begin to do this, God writes the most incredible story in our life. We do things that we never thought we would do. Um, we would never dream of doing. Uh, have you ever said this like, man, if, if God told me I was going to go through this. Do you know why he doesn't tell us what we're going to go through? Because he just gives us the trust that we can get through today. Can you trust him today? Not with everything that could happen in your life. Can you trust him today? Can you obey him today? And can you let him write the beautiful story that's in your life? Um, a man that's changed my life is Kyle Martin. I met Kyle uh, 2015. And... Uh, uh, just watching him live out life has been incredible. When you hear me say, how can I pray for you today? Kyle's the one that taught me that. Kyle just said, like, you just go out and, and meet people. And well, as you're meeting people, just say, how can I pray for you today? And then just love, love them, listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to them, and then let God lead you um, in making a difference in your life. Well, Kyle, um, he was one preaching here. He's from Dallas, Texas. He pro preached here a couple years ago, if you don't remember. Um, a few months ago, Kyle had a dream, and uh, I don't know if I would have the courage to do this. Um, in his dream, Kyle just sees this little picture of the president of Malawi calling the nation of Malawi to repentance. Uh, what would you do with a dream like that? First of all, I get my map and look up where Malawi is. I have no idea where Malawi is. Um, clueless on my geography. Like, I, would, I had no idea that Malawi is in Southeast Africa. Kyle has this dream, and he's like, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? He flies to Malawi to meet the president. Now, um, it's not just like a cold call. He had met him in New York City. When both were in New York City, Kyle will ask anybody how he can pray for them. And he asked the president of Malawi in New York City one time, how can I pray for you? And they just met each other. Then he, um, they, the president goes back to Malawi, and Kyle has this dream, and he tells the story to the president and says, can I, um, can I fly to Malawi and meet you? He flies to Malawi, gets a presidential motorcade from the airport, to the palace, um, I'm not making this up, like this is a guy that like he just trusts God today and he obeys God today and you know what, God is writing an incredible story in Kyle's life because he's doing this radically, um, so here's what happens, he meets him, he tells the guy his dream, the president 
calls the nation of Malawi to repentance um, publicly. Like, we're going to have a season of repentance in the country of Malawi. Um, he invites Kyle back for two weeks, and this two weeks just has ended where he brought 50 people from the United States. They met in four different stadiums around the country, and they called the nation of Malawi to repentance with thousands of people. And it all came from a dream where he just trusted God and said, God, what do you want me to do next? It is, it is absolutely amazing. Another part of the story is, um, so Kyle was going to take and rent four stadiums. He's going to take 50 people to Malawi. They're going to spend two weeks there, uh, take care of everything. He sends out a text a few months ago and says, I need $750,000 to be able to do this. But he commits to doing it. He was at the airport gate and he sends out a text saying, we just got the last $50,000 now. <laughs> That's trust. That's radical, radical trust. And God begins to do something through somebody who will just say, I will trust you and I will obey you no matter what. God, it's, it's not about my life. It's about trusting you. Now, I doubt that there's anybody in here that's going to have a, a dream kind of like that. But I'm telling you, you're going to hear God's voice. Every one of us hears God's voice. Somebody once said, every one of us hears God's voice in the shower. Um, some of us just get out of the shower and do something about it. <laughs> do you know why I think many of us talk about like hearing God's voice in the shower? That might be the only time you get quiet and turn off your radio or turn off your headset or turn off, turn off the sound so that you can hear his voice. You listen to his voice. I will trust you today. I will obey you today, and I will let you write the story of my life. Does anybody want to do that? Here's two groups of people here today. Some of us <clears throat> are going to hear his word, and we're going to put it into practice. And those people are described as wise people who build their house on the rock. The rains come down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house and that family and that life, but it stands firm because it has its foundation built on the rock. There's another group of people who are going to hear God's voice, and they're going to dismiss it. They're going to say, I, I, I doubt it. I doubt that's God's voice. I wonder about it, or I just get distracted. They'll hear his voice, but won't put it into practice. And those are described as the foolish. And when the rains came, and the streams rise, and the winds blow and beat against that house, and that family, and that life, it falls down because it had its foundation built on the sand. Here's the incredible thing about God's grace. God's grace meets us wherever we're at. And if I could hear the story of every single place, of every single person, when God met you, you were burdened and your, and your life was entangled in sin, every one of us. And God met us at that particular place in life. God meets it. You don't have to clean up your life for the grace of God to come towards you. God meets us wherever we're at. In, uh, in John Wesley's terms, it's called prevenient grace, where we don't work our way to God. God chases us and follows us. And wherever he meets you, God meets us and he unravels the sin and he takes the burden off of our life. God's grace meets us where we're at, but God's grace never leaves us where we're at. And I'm telling you, Anna, if you keep listening to his voice, if you keep following him, God is going to write an incredible, beautiful story in your life. You will get sweeter and more tender and more courageous, and God will do incredible things through your life. And friends, it's not about Anna. It's about every one of us. Have you hardened your heart towards God? 
What could God do with a today? Can I tell you just one story of a today that God did it? This particular today began with a man who was described as a thief who was sentenced to death. And of all days, he was sentenced to death next to Jesus Christ on a cross. His day began with a sentencing. His day included a death on a cross. And in one day, he went from a sentence to death to eternal life in paradise with God. That's what God can do with one day. What could God do with today in your life? Where, where could God take you today? And I believe if we just string together some days where we say, I'm trusting you with my today. I'm not going to live it all in worry. I'm not going to live it all thinking about yesterday or tomorrow. I'm going to live it today. When we trust him today and we obey him today, those are the kind of people that God writes the most incredible stories in their life. Anybody in? Anybody in for it? Yeah, let, let's, just, let's just bow for, for prayer here today. I want you to begin to ask the Holy Spirit. This is a great time to, to just hear his voice for the first time. Is there a burden on your life that's weighing you down that the Holy Spirit just identifies to you and wants you to cast it upon him? For he cares for you. Take off the burden today and give it to God. Is it a burden of worry today? Is it a thinking about the future? Is it a, is it a burden of regret? Of your regret is stealing your today. Could you take it off and lay it before him? He also describes there's a sin that so easily entangles and the Holy Spirit is, it speaks to us constantly, can convict us of sin. He does it tenderly. He doesn't accuse us. He just points out the sin that's entangling us. God, would you point out today the sin that's entangling my life? And when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgives us of our sins. I want to speak the truth to you today. You were made for so much more. You were made for so much more. God is writing a beautiful story in your life. You weren't made to be hard. You weren't made to be empty. You were made to be full and tender. You were made to follow and you were made to trust. So is there anybody here today that says, I want to spend my day today trusting God? Maybe just put your arm up just so he sees it. I'm going to spend my day trusting God. And I'm going to spend my day obeying God. God, would you give us the grace to trust you and obey you and let you write the story in our life? In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Amen. Would you stand here today for um, our closing song because I heard something and um, I need to uh, obey and I hate this. I hate singing. So we're going to sing a song. Um, it's like simply this, I surrender all. Uh, so I'm going to try to lead out um, and the, just the chorus. Uh, I surrender all. All to surrender. <laughs> I blew that one. <laughs> yeah. All to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all. Oh, that's, that really stunk. And that, that's about the best word that I could give to it. But there's a beauty to doing it. And I pray today, maybe not my voice gets stuck in your, but that, that tune, surrender everything to him. Go in grace. I won't do that next service, I don't think. <laughs> Please, Lord. Amen.